Hey guys, it's Kip here from KDC Marketing. And in today's video, I wanna talk about Wix Forms versus CMS Forms because this is a question that comes up often and you might not know which form is the correct form to use when building your Wix Studio website or your Wix Editor website. So I wanna answer this question and build both of these uh, forms from scratch and show you the differences and when you might use one versus the other. So the first one we're going to look at is Wix Forms, and this is the uh, just the default form option for Wix. So if I go into Add Elements here, and then I'm going to go down to Contact and Forms, um, I can add one that already exists, or I can create a new form. So let me click the Create a New Form, and what's going to happen is I'm going to go to the dashboard here and get the form builder. So I just have to drag and drop these fields over. So first name, last name, then I can set things like make the field required, last name, I can uh, do other things as well. So I have company name, I have some general things like a short answer, long answer, and these can be turned into whatever you want. This could be uh, your review. If you wanted this to be a review form, you could just create a star rating here um, and then set that as required and put this as review and then set this as required as well. So this is the default form builder and you have a lot of options here. You have uh, the contact section, the general section, the choices, the dates selectors, so dates, date picker, date and time. You have payments if you are able to accept payments on your website, there's different payment options you can put in. You have a submit button and then you have these layout elements adding a header to your form and some text. So you also have that. And then there's also rules that you can set here. You can set some rules for the form builder and then some pages. So you can have it be a multi-step form where there's multiple pages uh, inside your form. So this form is really great for most cases. I would say most of the time, this is the form you're gonna to wanna to use for lead generation or a contact form or that kind of thing. Even for a review form, this is the form that I would use for um, my a testimonial form because it has this ratings in here first name last name rating review um, but there's all kinds of forms you can build in here and you really can make a custom form you could have it be made up of multi-choice drop down single choice tag pickers check boxes uh, numbers signatures file uploads links you get a lot of options here out of the box with the wix form builder so if I click save, then what's going to happen is this is going to take me back to the front end and I'm going to have my form here on inside of my website. And then I can put it in my section and I can start collecting form submissions with this form. So that's the first option is the Wix forms is using that form builder, the drag and drop. And this is the one I would use most of the time. But the other option is you have a CMS form, which stands for the content management system forms. And it's a dynamic, uh, it allows you create, to create dynamic content. So it's kind of a different use case than just the generic form builder. So let me go in and add a new section and show you how you can set up this kind of form. So over here on the left hand side, there's this button called CMS, which stands for the content management system. So you have to turn this on in order for this to even become available to you inside of Wix Studio. So I'm gonna click start now, and then it's going to fire up the content management system. And then, the way that this works is you have collections which act like data sets that allow you to create dynamic content. So you're gonna click on the collections, you're gonna click create collection, and then I'm going to do uh, start with AI, and I'm gonna call this my testimonials collection. And then I need a form, I need uh, testimonials, so I'm just gonna ask AI to create this for me um, so first name, last name, uh, star rating, review, and location. Okay, so it's going to go to work and generate these fields for me. This is what I want it to do, and I want it to generate some sample content. It's going to add five items for me. I'm going to go in and let this create my collection here. So this is the content management system. This is the collection here, my data set of testimonials. So it's similar to the one we were just building in the form builder. I have John Doe, star rating for, then their review and their location here. So I guess this was just an extra field that I probably don't need. 
but this is my my collection here so I'm if I'm going to build a custom CMS form then I need to go into the more actions and go to the collection settings and I need to I always turn this on because I like this I like it to be to control the item visibility um, but the other thing I need to do is go into uh, the permissions and privacy so what I'm trying to do with this uh, content that I have right here is I'm going to be collecting content in a form. I'm not trying to just display it, I'm trying to collect it. So I'm gonna select this one and it's going to change the settings down here. So I'm just gonna go with save because I just want this to be a form. I'm not necessarily displaying it yet. And then I have to build this form a different way than I would build uh, this form builder, which is drag and drop. So I have to go in here to the add elements and then I go to the input section and you can see here it's already telling us that this requires code or CMS. So we're using CMS. You could also use code, but we're going to use CMS to do this. And we need a couple of things. We need this text box here. So we need, and I'm going to go in and change this to just text. And we'll just call this first name. And then placeholder. I don't want a placeholder. Okay, so here's the first name. And then we need to connect this to our data set. So this connector here, this connect to CMS, if I click this, it'll let me add a data set to this page. So I'll click that and then I choose my collection testimonials. And then I have my testimonials data set. I might want to call this testimonials form data set. I'm going to click create. And then this is set to read. So let's see. So we need to get our data settings right. So this needs to be set to write so that we can collect data. So the data set mode, let me go back to that real quick and see if I can. So it's going to put you here by default. If you click into the data settings, then you can select the data set mode and you get some other options here depending on what your mode is. So if it's read, it's, it you know allows you to filter things. But since we're doing write, we want people to be able to write into our form. Um, so we, we change it to this. Okay, so let me go back to my, my text input. You can see that right now this isn't connected to anything. The value is not connected. So I have to select my element first, and then I want to collect or connect my element to first name. And now the value is connected. And then I'm going to go in and do this for all the other fields in my form. So I'm just going to duplicate this field since the other one I know is a text field. I just go to settings, change this to last name. Then when I check what it's connected to, I need to change this to last name. And then for my ratings, I need to go back to my input and find the ratings because you can do ratings here. So I have ratings. So I'm going to add my little rating here, my star rating, and I'm going to connect this to the star rating. So that's connected to that. And you can see that it only wants to connect to a number field. Um, these text fields are grayed out because they don't they're not compatible with this type of input field okay so i have this here and then i need a few other elements i need the review itself which is what we have here so the review is just going to be another text input and i think let's do a text box and let's do it like this so we'll just use this feedback one here Okay, we're going to drag this out. Okay, we're going to go in and change the settings to review. So now we're doing review here so they can add their review. And I don't want a placeholder. Um, so now we've got the basics of our form. And we need to connect this element to our data set. So right now it's not connected to anything. So this needs to be connected to review. And so now we need to go in and add a submit button because we're pretty much at the same, besides the heading and everything here, we're, we pretty much have the same form. So all I, have, all I have to do for that is just add a regular button. And then I can go in and connect this button with a click action to submit. And then I can add a success message and add a failure message. And I actually want these to be under my button. So you can see this is a very different process than building this form in here. Um, and this is that's because this is a dynamic form, which I'll explain a bit more in a minute. Okay, so now that I've got this form here, one quick tip is if you want to hold shift and click all these elements, since this is a different way of building the form, even your success and error messages, 
put these in a stack and then let's drag our stack out a little bit and then we're going to hit this justify button so we're going to hit the justify button so they're all the same exact uh, width and then on the pixel side we're going to uh, put our pixels between at the same thing as well so if we do 20 pixels then it's going to make sure that everything is the same distance and then I just need to align my items to center and it will align these text elements here and then everything is looking a lot better. It's actually looking like a legitimate form now and I can go and test this out and see if it'll work. Now I didn't make any of the fields required but um, let's just preview this and test it. So I'm going to just do this for both forms so we can see the difference and then we will uh, do it with the custom one okay so that one couldn't submit we'll try this one not sure why that couldn't submit let's try this one Your content has been submitted. So this one might be because my website's not published. There could be a number of reasons. So let me go back in and check our uh, content management system here. So if this worked correctly, we should have data in our uh, in our collection. So we have it here, and you can see we had our other testimonials that the AI generated, but we have the new set of testimonials that I just created now, where it's Kip test five-star rating, I love CMS, and the location, I didn't add that in my form yet because I might get rid of this field anyway, so I might just delete this field because we don't really need the location here. So let me delete this field, and that field is deleted, and you can see that this status is set to hidden because in our collection settings, we decided to set the default status for new items to hidden. And so it created a new item when I submitted the form. So the reason you might use this type of form versus this type of form here is if you wanted to then take this data inside of your content management system and display it dynamically on the website. So maybe there's another place on the website where I'm displaying my reviews and I wanna take them, I wanna collect them in this dynamic form so I can display them somewhere else dynamically. Whereas if I just need the form to be submitted and that's really all I need to do, then I'm probably going to just use this form here, um, assuming that it'll work. We can try it one more time and it still might not work. But let's just see so I can show you what the submission would look like here. Yeah, so it might just be because it's not published. So let's try and publish this and see if that makes it so I can, can do the form. Okay, so let's do kip test and then five stars. CMS is awesome. Submit. Okay, so we received your submission. So that might be why that one wasn't working because the site might not have been published. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I go into my form here into my editing my form, then I can go into submissions. And so I can see here that KIP test, star rating, CMS is awesome when it was submitted. And um, there's a couple of things I can do with this, this, uh, this submission. Whereas the submission for my other form doesn't live here, it actually lives in my CMS. The submission lives in my testimonials collection my testimonials data set and here it is here and so if there is a there's also a, if we wanted to send that uh, customer a notification that they got that, that we received their submission first of all we'd have to ask for their email that would be the first thing we'd have to do that here and in our other form so that we could email them and say hey we received your submission or something like that um, it will live in the automations for both so if we go to this install for you, installed for you automation, this is where the regular form one lives, this new submission received for lead generation. 
And then I could also have it send an email to the person who submitted that form. If I want to do the CMS form, I have to come in here and do CMS form submitted. So you can see this is one of the preset options. So I have to go into CMS form submitted, and then I would choose my form. And let's see, hey, here it is. My testimonials form data set. So I would say, okay, and then I could add an action here. So add an action, send an email, and then I want to send an email that says, in this case, thanks for your review. You're so awesome. We love, we love that you're giving us such great feedback, whatever your email is that you'd want to send. You click apply. After you set the notification type, which is form, visitor submits a form, and then you'd add a recipient, which would be the owner of the website. Or you could add uh, another collaborator role, or you could add an email address as well. So then I would click apply. I would save this as CMS form email to customer or something like that and click activate. And then this would fire off and I could test this on when a form was submitted through CMS. But again, I'd have to have an email address because I, that's the action that it's, it's taking is uh, sending an email once it gets triggered. So that's a lot of information. Um, but it is important to know if you're trying to decide which form do I use? Do I use the regular forms or do I use a CMS form? If you use a CMS form, it's a little bit more work, but it's really great if you want to collect this data and then display it somewhere else on the website. If you are just trying to have someone submit the form and then you're going to follow up with them later and you're not really doing the uh, dynamic content, then you're probably going to want to use this form builder here. Um, just because it has everything, most everything that you should need, and uh, it's much easier to set up and to design and do everything else. You don't have to worry about spacing and all those kind of things. You can still design this further on the front end. I can still go in here and I can design the background, for example, and change the color. And I can change the layout, the padding, and I can still design this. Um, but you don't have to do it as manually as you do with this form here. Um, and then you have to do all the data set connections and everything there. So I hope that's helpful to see when you would use one versus the other. Like I said, it's more rare to have a CMS form. Um, if you really need it, then you can build these really robust and advanced um, forms with the content management system. There's a whole list of input fields you can use here um, to build these CMS forms. You just have to make sure you connect them to your data set and then that you make sure the submit button is connected to your data set as well with that click action that will submit the form itself. And I always recommend testing these out, testing these out, making sure that the data is coming through to your collection. And then if you're displaying it somewhere else, making sure it's displaying correctly. Even this form too, I would recommend testing this out and making sure that this submission is working and that your automations are working that you have set up for either of these forms. Um, so that's a, a, a quick breakdown, but a pretty comprehensive breakdown of the two. Um, and like I said, this exists for the Wix editor as well. This is here in this uh, example, this is Wix Studio, but you also can use CMS forms uh, and the Wix form builder that you see here inside the Wix editor. So I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next video.